different studying. And the first thing we started together back all the way back in September was a unit called God Created Everything, right? God Created Everything. And we spoke about how God created the world in seven days. We spoke about humans, us, being God's most special creation. And we spoke about how all of creation praises God, right? I hope you guys remember that. The second unit that we went over, we talked about how God's perfect creation was ruined and destroyed because something entered the world. Do you guys remember or remember what that something was that entered the world and destroyed God's good creation? Aiden? Sin. That's right. Sin entered the world and destroyed all of creation. The unit that we went over, number two, was creation is ruined. And we spoke about how the serpent came and he and it tempted Adam and Eve to eat from the fruit that God said not to eat to, and how sin spread to Adam and Eve's uh, children, and how Cain and Abel, um, Cain killed his brother Abel. We also spoke about how God spared a man named Noah, but judged the entire world through a flood. But still after that, people continued to sin and sin. And they even made a tower in Babel to stay together instead of spreading across the world as God had commanded. And then the third unit, right previous to this was called God's rescue plan. And we spoke about how God chose the father of the Israelites, Abraham, right? To become the father of faith. And God made a covenant with Abraham and said, I'll give you children as numerous as the stars in the sky, as the sand on the seashore. And God blessed him and said, you will become a blessing throughout all the world. And we learned about his descendants, Isaac, sorry, thank you, buddy. We talk, talked about Isaac, and then Jacob, and then Joseph, right? Yeah, and then, yeah, who said that? Job. Oh, yeah, thanks, Dean. <laughs> and then last week spoke about Job, and how even when all things go wrong, how God is in control, just like how God was in control of Job's entire situation. And now we are on unit four. Right? We have finished Genesis, the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. And now we are in the second book of the Bible, which is called Exodus. And because we are in a new unit, that means we also have a new big picture question. All right, We have one kind of question that, uh, that goes across the entire unit. And the new big picture question is, does God keep his promises? All right. Does God keep his promises? What do you guys think? Do you guys think God keeps his promises? Yes. yes. The short answer is yes. God does keep his answers, keep his promises. But the long answer is, and we'll see it up here. There you go. No problem. Yes. God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. Okay. God keeps his promises because he is faithful and he, you could trust in him. All right, and we're going to go over this big unit question for about four weeks. So we're going to learn about how God keeps his promises. Okay, today's Bible story comes from the second book of the Bible. Like I said, Exodus. Do you guys know what Exodus means? Okay, Genesis, the first book of the Bible, means the beginning. Exodus means the departure, right? Leaving, departure. Okay, in the stories from Exodus, we will see how God remained faithful to his promise. Many years has passed since uh, the time of Joseph, how God used Joseph to rescue his people from a famine and bringing them into Egypt. Okay, now, however, God's people were enslaved. They became slaves in, in, the, in the country of Egypt and they needed to be set free. So God raised up a new rescuer to deliver his people out of Egypt and lead them to the promised land. And this new rescuer is named Moses. So today we'll see how this story started in our story called God Called Moses. Joseph's family in Egypt grew even after Joseph, his brothers, and their families died. 
All the people in this family were known as Israelites because they came from Joseph's father, Jacob, who was also called Israel. When a new pharaoh came to power in Egypt, he was afraid of the Israelites. Pharaoh worried they would all fight against him. So Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves and gave them very hard work to do. Still, their families grew. So Pharaoh ordered for all their baby boys to be killed. Around this time, a woman gave birth to a son. She hid him as long as she could. And then she put him in a basket and set it along the bank of the Nile River. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to take a bath. She found the baby and felt sorry for him. Pharaoh's daughter wanted the baby to be her son. The princess named the baby Moses. Moses grew up as a prince in Egypt. One day, he saw an Egyptian man mistreating an Israelite man. Moses killed the Egyptian and fled from Egypt. He worked as a shepherd in another land for many years. Back in Egypt, the Israelite's people were miserable. They cried out to God, and God heard them. He had a plan to help them. One day, Moses saw a bush on fire. The bush was not burning up. God called from the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses replied, here I am. God told Moses to take off his sandals because Moses was standing on holy ground. Then God said, I have seen how my people are suffering. I want you to lead them out of Egypt to a good land I have for them. What if they ask for your name, Moses said. What should I tell them? I am who I am, God said. Tell them, I am has sent me to you. What if they don't believe me, Moses asked. So God gave Moses three miraculous signs to prove that God had appeared to him. Moses' staff would turn into a snake, his hand would become diseased and then healed, and water from the river would turn into blood. But Moses still made excuses. He said, please send someone else. God was angry, but agreed to send Moses' brother Aaron with him. So Moses went to Egypt. So the story tells us that the Israelites were enslaved to Egypt for 400 years. That's a long, long time, right? 400 years. You're only four years, some of you. Talk about 400 years. Life under Pharaoh was really, really hard. You know, in the story, we showed that Moses' mom got so scared because Pharaoh said you had to kill the baby. What did she do? Yeah, Ryan? Yeah, she put it in the basket in the river. And who found him? Pharaoh's daughter found him. Right? I think this turned off. Right? She hid her ba baby in a basket, and Moses was discovered and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. So Moses grew up in the palace as a part of Pharaoh's family. And God protected baby Moses and had a plan for him. But what happened? What did Moses do that caused him to run away and leave Egypt? What did he do? You guys remember? According to the story? Holy Ryan? Yeah, Ryan? Yeah, he killed an Egyptian guard. And because he killed an Egyptian, he was afraid that he was going to get in trouble. So he ran away and he left. And when he moved away, he got married, he had kids, and he was tending the sheep. And all of a sudden, he saw a bush, a burning bush, but it didn't burn up. He saw fire on the bush, but it didn't die. The bush was still alive. So he so wondered what was going on. He walked there and he realized it was God appearing to him in this bush. And God told Moses, I'm going to use you to go to Pharaoh and ask for the freedom of my people. And what did I think? Did Moses say, okay, I'll do it? No. Was he confident? Like, yeah, I got this, God, don't worry. No, he was scared. And he made excuses. Oh, I can't talk well. Eh, I don't know if they're going to like me. What if they don't believe me? What if this, what if that? And God said, just go. Just go. Right? And when you're scared, I am with you. When you're scared, you could take your brother Aaron with you. Okay? God had rescued Moses as a baby to be a part of his plan. 
to lead the Israelites from captivity, and God would be with Moses the entire way. What do we learn about God in Exodus then? We learn that God is faithful, that he hears us, and that he is in control. God is faithful, he hears you, and he is in control of all situations. We also learn God's name. Do you guys know what God's name is? It's not a name like ours, like Aaron or Emily or Charles. God says what? My name is? Yeah? No? Huh? God said my name is God? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah? I am, right? God said my name is I am. I am who I am. You're right. I am who I am. And it describes that God is sovereign. He never changes. I am constant. I am who I am. And by telling Moses his name, God reminded Moses of how great he is and that he is in control. God kept his promises to Abraham. And when the Israelites called out to God in the suffering, God had a plan to give them the land he promised Abraham. All right. Once again, I wanted to go over the big picture question answer. The big picture question was, does God keep his promises? And the answer for those who can read, if you can read it together, what is the answer? Yes, God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. All right. God always keeps his promises. Meaning, if God makes a promise to you guys too, God will keep those promises as well. Same as your mom. Your mom keeps all her promises? Really? That's great. Who? Your mom? Not your dad though, right? <laughs> okay. All right, let's not let's not give away family secrets now. She's dangerous. Okay. I don't know what that means. Okay, okay, okay. So now we get to the Christ connection. How does Jesus fit into the story of Moses, Moses' calling, all right? God saved Moses' life and called him to rescue God's people from slavery. The calling of Moses points to a greater calling and rescue, the call of Jesus to come to earth to save God's people. Jesus gave up his life to save us from slavery to sin. Moses was called by God to rescue the Israelites, all right? And Jesus was sent by God to rescue all of us who believe. All right? So if you believe in God, you will be rescued from your life of sin. Okay? We point back to Jesus with every story. And it's because it is important to know how Jesus connects to all the stories in the Bible. All right? So remember, God used Moses to rescue the Israelites. And God uses Jesus to save us all. All right? Believe in God. Know God's sovereignty. Put your trust in God and know that God is always faithful to you and keeps his promises to you. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for being a God who is faithful, for being a God who uh, keeps his promises, Lord Father. Lord, whenever we feel down and we feel like things are not going our way, we pray and trust and hope, oh Lord, that you will continue to remember us and you truly will be a God that you say that you are, a God who never changes, and a God who keeps his promises. We thank you in your son's name we pray. Amen.